Okay, welcome back to another Between the Pages book chat. And today we have erotic romance author Laura Ptolemy with us. And she's here to talk about her Virtus saga. I hope I got that right. And I'll turn it over to her now and let her introduce herself. So take it away. Hi there. I'm very happy to be here, first of all. So thank you for uh, hosting me. And um, thank you for any readers that have uh, checked in and are following this chat. Uh, I'm Laura Tolome, and I've been a writer now for about, um, well, most of my life, actually, since I started writing in high school. But um, I haven't done it, let's say, professionally until I was about 40 years old, which is uh, about 15 years ago. And uh, that's when I really started writing books and getting published and released, uh, always through a publisher. Um, I've never been self-published because I always uh, submitted my works to uh, renowned uh, publishers, <clears throat> both in and out of Internet. So I've always had a, the backup of a, of a publisher. My, I'm Italian, by the way, and uh, I chose to write in English because I know I can reach a broader audience in English than I can in Italian. But I've also tried my hand in uh, writing a few books in Italy, uh, in Italian, I mean, and uh, they didn't go so well because the publishing industry in Italy isn't, uh, how to say it, <clears throat> all that open to newcomers. Uh, whereas in um, writing in English, I've, I've had a lot more chances with publishers all around the world. And uh, I found the publishing industry in, uh, in the US, in Canada, and uh, also in England, and even in Australia, <laughs> they are much more open, you know, to let uh, new authors uh, try their hand and, you know, maybe back them up, uh, at least at the beginning, to see how it goes. And uh, right now, my main publisher is Ecstasy Books, which is based in Canada. Mm. Mm. And uh, I've written, yes, exactly. My home country. My home country. And exactly. <laughs> That's why. <clears throat> and I've written uh, several uh, romances uh, for Ecstasy Books, including this uh, Virtus Saga, and um, which we're, you know, uh, I'd like to explain also a little bit why it's not just romance, it's also erotica. And uh, I chose to write in this genre because I think it's uh, the best way to portray, you know, characters and no, mostly the troubles that afflict uh, a, a lot of humanity lately, which is, you know, conventions, how conventions, uh, how society tries to dictate, to give you rules on how to live your life, how to make your sexual choices, uh, or how to get in the way of your sexual orientations. And uh, there's a whole lot of crap going on, I think, all around the world. I mean, in all countries, not just... Uh, where I lived uh, in Italy or um, here in Spain where I recently moved because uh, I got kind of fed up of Italy. And uh, so I, I address these particular themes in my books, trying to tell people that I, th I think they can be free, you know, free to do, to make their choices as they want um, and, and, and not be afraid, you know, of the consequences. Just, try to live their life as, as they want it, not as society or someone else's wants them to live, just because, you know, it's an accepted convention or it's tradition or it's custom or, you know what I mean. And, yeah. uh, right. And that's the basis of the Virtus Saga because there, there are, <laughs> it's all based on three characters and, uh, and they will find love and, um, and um, uh, and the purpose of their lives uh, by sticking together, by being together, and uh, in the end forming, uh, I'm not going to say a couple because there are three, <laughs> but uh, a, a union. Uh, they, they end up marrying each other, you know, and, and this is what my philosophy is all about. It's, uh, it's my thought that uh, you can basically live your life with whomever you like, however many you like to, <laughs> and, uh, and be happy, and, uh, and really be happy, and really have close, very, very, very close relationships, you know, regardless of what others might think or what society might think. 
Okay, so so tell us a little bit about the book, um, what it's about, the characters, that sort of thing. Well, okay, the entire series is about nine books. And uh, it starts off with uh, the first one, which is Virtus Sex. And uh, it's, it's a dark fantasy. So it's all a, a world of my creation and, uh, and of my building. <laughs> and um, in this world, <clears throat> It, there, there is a, a society that it's about strictly, I'm not going to say rigid, but let's say class oriented. So there are servants, there are lords, there are princes, there are, you know, and each one has its own role in the society and uh, they never cross lines. It, it's, a, um, it's a peaceful society and uh, the, everybody's got, you know, what they need. There are no people that are dying of hunger of anything. But the strange thing is that you know, nothing is actually advancing. You know, there are no technological advancements. There are no new discoveries. There are no scientific breakthroughs. Nobody's really studying. They're just living their lives um, fine. I mean, and they're content with what they have, let's say. Uh, they, they don't want to produce more, like in the farming industry. They don't want to do more or they just do enough to live, everybody to live, uh, um, let's say, without any any hardship. And in this world we have, <clears throat> this is where my, my first character is, and it's, uh, he's a prince. And um, <clears throat> He's, um, how do you say, <clears throat> we, we start off with him who's, uh, losing his way home from uh, uh, having visited a uh, nearby town. And uh, he meets up with, um, <clears throat> with a woman whom he doesn't recognize, but she looks exactly like him, like, you know, he's a t like she, she could be his twin or something. And uh, from there, we learn uh, that uh, she's um, she was actually she had actually grown up with him and had been, let's say, one of his childhood uh, companions, until at one point he totally forgot about her, and uh, <clears throat> so he's intrigued. He takes her in, and uh, and soon after he takes her in, we learn that. Um, um, he has been, um, how do you say it? He, <clears throat> forgive me, uh, I'm getting okay. myself, <laughs> I'm getting myself lost in wanting to say everything and, uh, and all at once. <laughs> Let's say he starts a certain type of relationship with her, even, if, even though she's, she's a servant. You know, like I said before, there's a, a class, uh, a class breakdown, and and she's at the lower end of the, of the class, obviously, and uh, <clears throat> he. But but still, he's intrigued, so he takes her in, and uh, then we learn that he's actually in love with someone else to, entirely, with a man, uh, a man whom uh, he's loved since uh, he was, uh, let's say, a teenager, and uh, that he has grown close, very very close to, uh, in the last few years. And uh, <clears throat> from there, it starts a whole adventure from which this prince will become actually the leader of the, the entire planet. So the person with the most power. And he learned that his uh, world is actually this perfect, uh, no hunger zone uh, world uh, with everybody very happy, everybody having a lot of sex. Uh, and so nobody's complaining, nobody's dying of hunger or anything, but behind all this facade, it's actually, there's actually something very sinister going on because it's like their time has been stopped and uh, crystallized at a certain moment. And there's no going forward, there's no advancement. And uh, he learns that there's something like uh, a device that is actually controlling them all. It's controlling the world, it's controlling the people, and it's controlling the sex. And from there on, he's, he will make it his mission to destroy the device without destroying the world in the process, because it's so ingrained in the people that uh, shutting it down or getting rid of it risks to blow up the place, uh, practically. Uh, so that that's 
that's a story, let's say, in uh, five minutes' time. But it's nine books. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, nine it's hard to condense, isn't it? But yeah, it, does, so it sounds very intriguing, and it's got some nice fantasy along with the romance, which is, which is cool. So um, uh, tell us a little bit about the characters. What are their personalities like? Well, uh, there's a very dominant character that is this prince, Duncan Caldwell. Uh, he's... Um, He's, uh, he knows what he wants. He knows, um, he, he, he's made up kind of, he's made up his mind, you know, about who, who he is and who he wants to be. And he's a very fair person. He, he likes, he likes also to be unconventional because he likes to, um, he would like in his mind to break down uh, these class distinctions and, uh, you know, have everybody a, a more fluid society where it isn't so rigid, rigid or structured. Um, the woman that uh, he finds uh, <clears throat> and that he eventually uh, takes in is uh, Eleanor and uh, Eleanor Meyer. And uh, he, he learns that uh, she's... Um, <clears throat> She's uh, the daughter of uh, a servant of, of his family. And uh, he also learns that her father, he, I mean, not her father, his father, had been quite taken with her when she was a little girl. That's why they grew up together uh, in his estate. And uh, his father has also made her study with him. And she's a very, not very, beautiful but very spirited <laughs> young woman. Uh, she's also, you know, kind of, um, um, she, she doesn't exactly know what she wants to be, but she knows what she doesn't want to be. Let's, let's put it this way. And then there's uh, his lover, Christopher Templeton. He's a beautiful man. And, uh, but he's very jealous, very, very jealous, very jealous of uh, Eleanor, very jealous of anybody getting close to his lover. And uh, he will fight her every step of the way. In, in this mix uh, that is explosive uh, enough as it is, I also put in uh, that they have special powers because this is another thing of this world that people can have, um, let's say magical powers. So, for example, uh, Christopher Templeton is a healer, and uh, but he's also a destroyer uh, because healing and destroying, I mean, they go, they kind of go hand in hand. So he's like this, he can turn himself into this big fire and this big fire can uh, either heal or destroy things. Uh, Eleanor Meyer is a mind reader, for example, and uh, she can read minds uh, of uh, people she can connect to. So not of everyone, but only those people whom uh, are receptive, let's say, to her power. And she can have uh, head talks with them and, uh, <clears throat> and learn their feelings by looking at their auras. So she sees all lights around people and uh, she can interpret their feelings, what their sensation is, uh, just by looking at them. And um, Prince Caldwell, he'll be the most powerful of all, of course, because he's also going to become the leader of the planet. And uh, he has very different powers. But the most important one is that he can balance forces. So when there are opposite forces or when there is, let's say, good and evil, he can find a way to, uh, <clears throat> to balance them out and uh, reduce the risk of, um, you know, of conflict or or things or dramatic things. So they aren't just interesting characters. <laughs> they have also very uh, definite powers that they'll use and that um, the situation, but also their, their intimate uh, story will force them to use even if they didn't want to. And these powers are also the same thing that are going to bring them closer because in the end, the solution I mean, the only real solution is that they work together and defeat the, the evil that is uh, behind their world and that is uh, orchestrating everything and has been orchestrating everything uh, behind the scenes. So, 
Okay, so uh, what was the hardest type of scene or the hardest scene for you to write in the series? The hardest things. Um, <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the, the whole story was really very... Okay, it wasn't hard to write, but I didn't have it clear in my mind. You know, there are some authors that start out and they know exactly how they're going to begin, how it's going to go in the middle, how it's going to end. Uh, they usually make um, a small um, synopsis or, you know, um, something to um, to guide them during the process of writing, and <clears throat> and end up exactly where they wanted to end up. For me, it was very different because I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> I mean, I started with certain scenes running through my head. And I just wrote them down. And from there, it started the story. But it, it wasn't like I knew where I was going. It was like, it was strange. But um, believe me, this is what happened. It was like the characters were telling me the story. And I was writing it along as they told it. So it wasn't like I knew where they'd go. Uh, they just, they knew where they were going. And eventually, they took me there. And uh, I, I, I'll tell you why also. The, the thing I, I was telling at the beginning that uh, when uh, he, when the prince meets the woman, meets Eleanor, he doesn't recognize her, but she's grown up with him. I mean, she was uh, his uh, best friend until she was, um, <clears throat> until he was 10 uh, or 11 years old. So how could, how could it be possible that he doesn't remember her? Well, you wouldn't believe it, but I came to the why after three books. So at the fourth book, <laughs> I understood why he didn't remember. But I swear, I didn't know it at the first book. And this, this is just one example of the things that I went through in the writing process that seem unbelievable. But... Really, th th those are the explanations I, uh, they gave me in the end. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just got to listen to the characters. So yes, um, exactly. do you have a favorite scene that you wrote in the series? Do I have a favorite scene? Um, well, the, <clears throat> there are many. But I think uh, one of my favorite scenes is at the end of the of the saga when they've um, <clears throat> uncovered what uh, the what is the evil behind the, everything that has been happening on the planet, and they go to confront him. And there is a scene where uh, <clears throat> Christopher Templeton tries to handle things by himself. He gets shot down, and uh, he's about to die. And uh, this is one of the things, uh, this is another scene that I knew I had to write but I didn't know why. I really didn't know why I wanted him, you know, to, to, to get that close to death. And in the end, this is something that my husband explains to me. I mean, he read it all. The, the, he, he, he was with me uh, every step of the way. He read all the books and he gave me his comments. He told me, you know, what worked, what didn't. Uh, so I changed it. He also had the idea for all the covers. So he, he was really invaluable in all this uh, writing process. <laughs> and, uh, and the thing about uh, Christopher Templeton almost dying it was like it was because he was still, uh, let's say, immature. He had to go through, you know, the, the process of uh, getting shot, almost dying, in order to really mature, to become an adult, and finally accept the union that they had been forming in all the other eight books. So it was a, uh, it was kind of uh, I had to do it. I mean, I had to put the character in that situation. Otherwise, he would have never really grown up. But this I didn't understand. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know this either. And he, he explained it to me. And it was, you know, ah, you know, one of those moments of revelations, I said, because I, I told him, I said, you know, I keep thinking that I have to write this. I didn't want to because I hate killing off my characters. I don't want to kill off my characters. I get so attached to them that I never want to see them die. And uh, but I knew how to do it, and uh, and in the end, uh, you know, he told me why, and and, and he was right. <laughs> it was exactly like that. 
So that that was really this is really the scene that most remains in my mind. Okay, so um, do you have a favorite character in the series? Uh, yes, it, it's the, it's Christopher Templeton, uh, the jealous, uh, beautiful lover who would fight for his lover every inch of the way. He'd uh, lock him up if he could uh, because he reminds me of many people, you know, many people that um, are jealous uh, or that believe that a little bit of jealousy is is good for a relationship. Well, it's never good. I mean, jealousy is never, never good for, uh, not for a relationship and not for a person because it brings you to assume that the person belongs to you. And the whole point of the saga is to say, listen, people don't belong to one another. I mean, they choose to stay together because there's a, uh, you know, there's uh, there are emotions involved. There's a friendship. There's a close connection. There's whatever work. I mean, it could be whatever reason, but no one owns another human being. And jealousy, unfortunately, makes you think that you do. Partly because mo most people say, you know, ah, if there isn't jealousy, if you, uh, you aren't jealous, how do you know you love him or love her, you know? And, uh, and they make this their justification. And it isn't. It just isn't. Because this just brings you on a very dark path. And uh, I, I don't know about Canada, but in Italy, there are unfortunately many, many men who <sighs> kill their women their uh, wives, their girlfriends, their fiancés, uh, sometimes their whole families, just because, you know, they think uh, they, they're jealous then, uh, and that they own them. And so if she steps out of line, well, there's a punishment. And sometimes the punishment is death. So I, I really, this is one battle that I try to, to fight in my books because jealousy is never ever ever good can only bring really tragedy in uh, in relationships in people's lives and uh and everything yeah that's that that's too okay. true there's too many incidents of, of jealousy turning violent yes yes and um that's why christopher templeton because he's uh he's very jealous at the beginning and he will keep being jealous but slowly he understands that, uh, <clears throat> you know, having another person in his relationship isn't going to take nothing, anything away from him. It's just an addition, something more to their relationship instead of being something less. Because people are always afraid, you know, that if they give their uh, the loved one the freedom that, that they that they're owed because everybody should be free. Uh, they believe that they're going to misuse this freedom or that, you know, they meet someone else and uh, <clears throat> and eventually leave them or, you know, they have actually, their jealousy is just a fear of abandonment. And that was it with Christopher Templeton too. He, he had this uh, ingrained fear that if his lover loved someone else, he'd leave him. And that wasn't the case. <laughs> and uh, this is, I mean, my story proves this. But, I mean, even in real life, it, it's not necessarily so. Because uh, other people make you grow. And uh, if you really believe in your relationship, other people are only going to make you closer to the person you love, not farther away. And if the person goes farther away, it's because... Most of the time, there was nothing to keep them close in the first place, see? And, uh, well, at least that's, you know, that's my belief. And uh, that's what I try telling my readers, or, or at least putting in my stories. Okay. So, um, besides romance, is there any other genre that you've written in or would like to write in? Yes. Uh, as I said, I tried my hands writing two books in Italian, and, uh, and they were quite different genre, well, uh, genres. One of them was about an uh, investigator uh, who is a cat. 
So I, I wrote a whole book about this cat who finds a murdered victim and uh, <clears throat> he tries you're to- You're a little off camera. Could you-, could you oh, yeah. Like okay, this. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> We're losing sorry. you there. No, 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 sorry. Okay. And uh, he tries to help the police to solve the crime. And of course he doesn't talk and uh, he just uh, meows. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> the, the, the focus of the book is how is the cat going to tell the police, you know, who the murderer is? Because he finds out who it is. And uh, also with the help of his uh, other cat friends, but also with some dogs uh, who live in his neighborhood. And, um, and it's a really cute tale um, for young adults. But also for adults, you know, who want to, who who love cats, uh, animals in general, and you know, want to have some um, fun time reading. <clears throat> so that's a, a genre I, I I tried, and it, it was very nice writing it. Uh, also because it was based on my cats, actually, because uh, I love cats and I live with four of them. So one of my one of my previous cats. Uh, was um, is the main character of the book, and uh, he was helped by his other three <laughs> friends. <laughs> other, <clears throat> and uh, and then I wrote another book, which is uh, Little Five Points, and uh, that's <clears throat> more about me. So it's all focused about me and uh, my experience in growing up in the United States, um, and how I found it, you know, very very different from uh, Italy, which is uh, the place. Uh, uh, I was born in and uh, and I lived for not 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 a long time, but uh, <clears throat> because I I actually grew up in Africa in in Nigeria, but uh, still Italy is uh, my reference point uh, also because my family is Italian, so you know all the values and traditions and uh, everything relating you know to Italian families and such. Um, uh, got transferred to me and I couldn't help noticing how different they were from uh, the uh, American values. Uh, the way families grow up in uh, in the U.S. is totally different from the way families uh, grow up in uh, Italy, the way, you know, parents relate to their children, uh, relate to their schools, uh, a whole bunch of differences. And that's what my book was about, you know, this uh, young girl going to her first year in uh, at the university and uh, so living on her own for the first time and finding out, exploring this uh, new world actually and uh, finding, comparing, uh, finding, you know, differences in uh, what she liked and what she didn't like and uh, it, it, it was kind of, you know, um, I'm, I'm not going to say a memoir because that wasn't it, it was still fiction, <laughs> but uh, very close to one. <clears throat> Fiction inspired by real life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we'll wrap it up here. And I'd like okay. to thank you for, for coming on and chatting with us today. Thank you. And, thank uh, you why for don't you having tell, me. tell everyone where they can find you and your books? Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm, an, uh, I'm on Amazon. On Amazon, you can find all my books. Uh, both the Italian ones and the English one, uh, in case you're interested. I also have a site, and it's uh, lalagatta.com. And, um, well, that's basically it. I mean, for sure you can find me on the Internet. <laughs> yes, and I, I should have at least one link in the description when this goes up. So okay. you, you can check out her books there. And um, again, thank you for being here. And that's it for today and Between the Pages book chat. So bye for now. Bye-bye.